हेलो वेलकम टू द न्यू वर्कशॉप ऑन हीट ट्रांसफर इन पाइप एंड नोसल नंबर कैलकुलेशन एंड कंपेरिजन विद द एनालिटिकल मॉडल दैट इज गिवन बाय डीटीएस वोल्टर कोलेशन फॉर टर्बुलेंट पाइप फ्लोस और टर्बुलेंट इंटरनल फ्लोस सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इफ आई डिस्क्राइब द प्रॉब्लम दिस इज द टर्बुलेंट फ्लो एंड based on the renard number the renard number definition is that it is the density times velocity times diameter if, if this is a pipe uh, and if for the flat plate this will this would be the length divided by viscosity so based on renard number for internal flow the flow becomes turbulent when renard number is greater than 4000 okay so uh, for this problem renard number we are starting from the 10000 then also we will get a solution for 20000 and 60000 and 1 uh, lakh okay so uh, for these all cases basically the idea is that uh, there are two heat transfer modes one is the r3 heat transfer modes but uh, mostly we are interested in the two heat transfer modes the one is the conduction and the second one is the convection so if i write down here the the laws for conduction it is the fourier's law of conduction that is the q is equal to minus k this minus sign is that the direction of the heat transfer to make it correct so minus k a delta t by delta x and uh, area is the is a normal surface area uh, uh, perpendicular to the direction of the heat transfer and the convection is given by the newton's law of cooling and this is q is equal to h a delta t so obviously the h will be having units of watts per uh, meter square kelvin and the k will have the units of watts per uh, meter kelvin so there is a one uh, length unit is missing in the in the k okay so uh, the conduction uh, in the conduction problems the k is the uh, is a is a thermal conductivity of the material that is is a known property and area we can find out very easily and delta t we, we can determine and delta is also known for that particular thickness of the geometry so the problem here is to find out heat transfer rate uh, but in the in the case of convection the most mostly the problem is that to find out the heat transfer coefficient this is very important because uh, if there is a combination of the conduction and convection we can find out the value of heat transfer rate uh, from the conduction because in the steady state heat transfer rate should be equal and uh, we know the wetted area and also we know the delta t this is also a question that how to find out this delta t which is also topic of this whole exercise so the most important thing is to find out the uh, heat transfer conduction heat transfer coefficient and from conduction heat transfer coefficient we can find out the nusel number that is equal to h times diameter divided by the the conductivity of the fluid this is not a conductivity of the some some solid bodies but this is the thermal conductivity of the that particular uh, fluid that is being flow uh, being uh, is 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 flowing over there okay so uh, to solve this question basically when we apply heat transfer in some region we can apply transfer uh, by two methods either we can provide the constant temperature or we can apply the constant heat flux in both cases we get we can get the uh, solutions we can have also we have the uh, analytical correlations okay so uh, what i did here is that i i made a one pipe and uh, i assume the diameter arc i kept diameter of pipe as a 1 meter to make the calculations simpler okay then uh, from the correlations for the turbulent pipe flow or turbulent internal flows the l by d ratio is given by this correlation so if i put the non summer value for example 10000 the entrance length is equal to because diameter is 1 so entrance length is 4.4 and for 1000k for the for 100k the entrance length is 6.8 so what is the entrance length basically when flow starts to enter some 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 
बॉडीज सो इनिशियली द फ्लो इज यूनिफॉर्म एट सम लोकेशन ओके एंड एज इट मूव्स अलॉन्ग द पाइप लेंथ वॉट हैपन्स दैट द बिकॉज ऑफ नो स्लिप कंडीशन ऑन द पाइप वॉल्स द फ्लो विल स्टार्ट टू स्टिक दियर एंड ऑल्सो वेन द वन द वन एलिमेंट और द वन पार्टिकल स्टिक्स दियर इट विल ऑल्सो अफेक्ट द सेकेंड पार्टिकल एंड देन थर्ड पार्टिकल एंड देन सो ऑन सो वॉट हैपन इज दैट दिस यूनिफॉर्म फ्लो विल विल बी अफेक्टेड बाय द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द वॉल एंड इवेंचुअली दिस विल फॉर्म ए सम प्रोफाइल एंड दैट नोन एज द वेलासिटी प्रोफाइल एंड अप टू सर्टन लेंथ दिस विल बी इन द ट्रांजेक्शन मीन दिस विल बी डेवलपिंग इन टू सम प्रोफाइल बट आफ्टर सर्टन लेंथ वॉट विल हैपन इज दैट दिस प्रोफाइल विल रिमेन सेम एंड दिस विल नॉट चेंज दैट्स नोन एज द वेन द फ्लो इज बिकम्स फुली डेवलप्ड so uh, for the laminar flow this length is little bit longer and for tubular flow this length is little bit smaller so uh, the condition is that after this con- after this condition what will happen is that the velocity will no longer change in x direction okay but definitely there is a change of velocity along the y direction that is the because of the uh, for that thing we get the boundary layer okay so uh, it means that the when the velocity is not changing uh from one location let's say we are getting profile here and this is the point we want to see values so exactly on the second location of the x the same location in the y the value of velocity will remain same that's why the change in the velocity is is same along the x direction okay so uh but to be on safe side what i did here is that i provided the entrance length as 20 meters and this would be the unheated region because uh once the flow is fully developed then if you apply the heat transfer we can only get the effects of the heat transfer otherwise if you apply it from the beginning we will get the mixed effects of the uh, flow development and as well as the heat transfer that's why we have to provide the some region that is unheated region where the flow will be developed and we get the velocity profile like this for turbulent flow for laminar flow this will be a parabolic okay so after that i i provided the uh constant heat flux and uh, those are the 50 watts per meter square okay now what 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 does it mean it means that the if the pipe length is 10 meter and pipe diameter is 3. Point, is a 1 meter so uh, circumference would be the pipe d that is 3.14 and the length is 10 so this is 31.4 meter square is the surface area of the pipe so if you apply this one this one on this thing it means that the we are applying basically 15 into 31.4 watts so but if you if you make it per unit area this is equal to 50 watts per meter square so for the 1 meter square area basically we are applying the 50 watts okay so this is the uh, starting of the problem that we are starting with the problem and uh, so we have the uh, a uh, non number and uh, we uh, got the diameter of the pipe that is a 1 meter and then from the entrance length we found out the unheated region and uh, i doubled it or almost more than double and made it 20 meters and then provided the 10 more meters for the uh, where the heat transfer or the thermal boundary layer will be start to develop and that's why i will also get the values of the thermal conditions or the heat transfer coefficients almost at the end of the pipe that is the close to the outlet okay so this is the problem definition and uh, uh, from the uh, heat transfer coefficient we can find out nusselt number this is uh, what we are going to do in this whole workshop okay and then compare with the correlation okay so uh, this is the uh, all the given conditions we have the inlet we have the outlet we have the two walls unheated wall and the heated wall heated wall has a heat flux of 50 watts per meter square and the viscosity and density are taken for the air and uh, then we can find out the values of the uh, velocity from ground number viscosity diameter density so we can use a ground number formula and we can find out the velocity which is equal to ground number times viscosity divided by density divided by the diameter so it becomes 0.145 So this is the, about this whole problem description.